The United States is falling behind while history is being made by other countries. India's Chandrayaan-3 has successfully completed its mission on the moon's south pole, marking the first time such an achievement has been accomplished. Let's take a look at this historic mission, how India accomplished this milestone and why the craft has now gone offline. On July 14th, the Indian space research organization known as ISRO embarked on its third lunar exploration mission. This mission, named Chandrayaan-3, shared a striking resemblance in its objectives and hardware with the agency's prior lunar endeavor, which unfortunately ended in a crash. Fortunately, this time, the lander successfully executed its planned descent and safely reached the lunar surface. At 8.32 a.m. Eastern Time, the lander accomplished its descent and touched down in the vicinity of the lunar South Pole region. This achievement followed a 19-minute journey from lunar orbit. This success marks a significant milestone for India, as it now joins the ranks of the United States, China, and the former Soviet Union in achieving a successful soft landing on the moon. Remarkably, this accomplishment is even more impressive when one considers the relatively low budget allocated for this mission. Just days before India's successful lunar landing with Chandrayaan-3, Russia faced a setback when its Lunar 25 lander crashed into the moon. The crash was attributed to issues arising from an engine burn, this event highlights the considerable challenges and complexity associated with lunar landings. ISRO achieved this remarkable feat through a series of carefully orchestrated maneuvers. They began by gradually increasing the lander's orbit, a process that culminated in a critical burn on July 31st. This burn set the lander, named Vikram, on a trajectory towards the moon. Over the next five days, Vikram journeyed through space, inching closer to its lunar destination. On the fifth day of this journey, Vikram entered lunar orbit, setting the stage for an anticipated lunar landing attempt scheduled for August 23rd. Even after reaching lunar orbit, Vikram wasn't done with its propulsion module. It continued to employ this module to execute precise engine burns. These burns gradually adjusted its trajectory, bringing it into a circular orbit approximately 60 miles or 100 kilometers above the lunar surface. Remarkably, this achievement occurred a full week ahead of the originally planned landing attempt. The crucial moment of separation between the lander and its propulsion module occurred on August 17th. This marked the beginning of the lander's final phase, where it aimed to land safely on the lunar surface. The designated landing zone for the rover covered an area of 4 by 2.5 kilometers. In preparation for this challenging task, ISRO's team of scientists and engineers divided this landing area into a meticulous grid of 3,900 equal-sized subsections. Each subsection was thoroughly assessed for its safety level and suitability for landing. This comprehensive evaluation provided reference information crucial for ensuring a secure and successful lunar landing. During the critical phase leading to the lunar landing, the onboard computer of the lander was programmed with a specific protocol. If it found itself positioned above the predetermined landing zone, the computer would identify the safest feasible subsection within that area and proceed accordingly toward touchdown. However, if the lander deviated from this predetermined zone, it would shift into autonomous mode, relying on its own hazard assessment based on the imagery it captured rather than the pre-programmed subsection-based landing plan. As the lander entered the final terminal descent phase, it descended to a height of approximately 150 meters above the lunar surface. During this stage, it hovered for around half a minute, carefully assessing the terrain below for any potential landing hazards. Upon evaluation, it became apparent that the surface immediately beneath the lander was not deemed safe. In response to this assessment, the lander autonomously sought out a safer adjacent area and decided to touch down there, ensuring a more secure landing. In the immediate aftermath of the landing, the Indian Prime Minister made an announcement declaring India's presence on the moon. The lander touched down at a relatively flat location with coordinates of 69.37 degrees south latitude and 32.35 degrees east longitude. Notably, this achievement marked the highest latitude at which any spacecraft had ever successfully soft landed on the moon. The descent phase of the mission received vital support from ESA's S-Track Deep Space Tracking Station in Australia. This station played a crucial role by providing additional tracking support during the lunar landing, effectively serving as a backup for ISRO's own ground station. Furthermore, the lander successfully established contact with the previous mission's orbiter, which had been in lunar orbit since 2019. This orbiter will serve as a pivotal communication link with Earth throughout the remainder of the mission, facilitating data transmission and ensuring seamless communication with mission control. This mission marked India's second attempt to land near the moon's South Pole, an area that holds great intrigue for both scientists and space exploration enthusiasts. The South Pole region is considered relatively unexplored and holds immense potential due to its anticipated abundance of water ice. If this water ice can be accessed, it could be used for crucial purposes such as rocket fuel and life support in future crewed missions. India's initial endeavor to achieve a lunar landing in September 2019 ended in failure when the lander crashed into the moon due to a software glitch. Remarkably, despite the setback of the previous lunar landing mission, 
India successfully prepared the next lander with a tight budget of $75 million. Significant changes were implemented between the two missions to ensure success. According to the director of the Physical Research Laboratory in India, key alterations were made to the landing strategy. Specifically, onboard algorithms responsible for calculating spacecraft speed in real time during descent were reworked. These adjustments provided the spacecraft with greater flexibility to deviate from the original protocol while still maintaining the capability to execute a safe lunar landing. Additional modifications that contributed to the success of the mission included enlarging the target landing zone, strengthening Vikram's legs to endure the increased landing speeds, and implementing dynamic engines that adjusted the spacecraft's velocity to ensure a smoother touchdown. Once the lander safely touched down on the moon's surface, the true mission commenced. Inside the Vikram lander, a compact rover was deployed, which then proceeded to roll onto the terrain, initiating the analysis of lunar soil and rocks. Notably, the wheels of this rover bear a distinctive religious symbol, a wheel with 24 spokes, as depicted on the Indian flag and ISRO's logo. ISRO hopes that as the rover explores the lunar landscape, both of these symbols will be imprinted onto the moon's surface, where they will endure untouched for many years to come. From a scientific standpoint, the lander's thermal probe made a significant finding, revealing that the temperature of the moon's regolith decreases significantly at a depth of just a few centimetres. Additionally, the rover employed a laser-induced breakdown spectroscope, known as LIBS, to make several noteworthy discoveries. One of these findings was the presence of sulphur on the moon's surface. Moreover, this instrument detected a range of other elements, including aluminum, calcium, iron, chromium, titanium, manganese, silicon, and oxygen. While some of these elements were anticipated to be present on the moon, others had been previously observed in different lunar locations. The Chandrayaan-3 lander was equipped with a seismometer that recorded ground movements beneath it. It successfully detected at least one natural source of seismic activity, which is currently the subject of investigation. Additionally, the seismometer captured the rover's movements in its vicinity. However, the scientific endeavours of these vehicles extended beyond seismology. The rover, in particular, covered a distance of over 100 metres on the moon's surface before it had to power down for the lunar night. Both the lander and the rover have to endure the harsh cold of lunar nights without any heating units or power. As of now, the primary mission is considered complete. Before concluding its mission, the lander executed a small hop on the lunar surface. It ignited its engines, lifting itself by 40 centimeters and moved about 30 to 40 centimeters away. This made it the second spacecraft to not only land on the moon, but also perform a controlled ascent and landing at a different location, demonstrating remarkable engineering prowess. Currently, both the lander and rover are in a state of dormancy, patiently awaiting the return of sunlight. While there are no certainties regarding whether they will reawaken, ISRO is fully prepared should they do so, standing ready to continue their mission if the opportunity arises. What do you think? Will the rover wake up or will the harsh conditions take a toll on the equipment? Please share your thoughts in the comments below.